Microgen was started in 2008 by Dr. Randy Walcott. Uh, Dr. Walcott is a wound care specialist, and through his research, he was introduced to uh, Dr. Cosserton, who is the father of all biofilm research, and Dr. Cosserton opened uh, Dr. Walcott's eyes to the clinical utility and advantages of molecular technology over traditional culture. Next generation sequencing is the ability to uh, use molecular technology to identify uh, microorganisms um, by their DNA. And it's important because um, the traditional cultural tools have not always provided the diagnostic information that a clinician needs to make accurate decisions on uh, antimicrobials. In my opinion, the fault of traditional cultures is the fact that we really haven't changed them in 150 years. We've automated them, but that's actually made it even worse because now you don't get the sort of individualization that you did at least when you did your own cultures. The automated information I get from PCR and NGS gives me a lot more information to be able to make clinical decisions. 16S and ITS-NGS is the next generation sequencing method that utilizes amplicons. They target conserved gene regions found in all fungus and bacteria, ITS and 16S respectively. And through those, the primers are able to bind to the conserved regions and amplify the variable regions within those genes. That amplification allows us to see any unique sequences and really distinguish those bacteria and fungus from one another. So while strain level specification can be beneficial in some treatment options, we have found that resolution of the genus and species level afforded to us by 16S and ITS amplicon sequencing is enough for physicians that use our service to determine an appropriate course of action a majority of the time. This, in conjunction with the rapid turnaround time and low cost per sample that comes with using amplicon sequencing technology, makes it possible for us to offer a solution that allows for timely and cost-effective treatment of the patients that have trusted us with their samples. The best way to identify how I've used it in my practice is how I evolved from very early on. Uh, I had a practice in which I had multiple complicated infections and I was up against the wall of the failures of traditional cultures. So when NGS came into my life about three years ago, uh, it was an eye-opener, uh, it was a, a game-changer. So in my daily practice, the use of next generation sequencing um, has an, an impact on some particular cases. For example, blood culture. We have organisms that are identified on the blood culture bottle, but the organism is unable to grow in solid media. So we need the organism to grow in solid media to be able to identify through routine microbiology testing. So one of the advantages is that we know that the organism is there based on gram stain, so, but it's not growing. So we are able to send the blood directly to microgene DX and they're being able to do a rapid sequencing and we get the identification of organism back. The other advantage is organism for AFB and fungus. We have a mole growing in a media that is still too young to grow. We know we need to identify quickly because it's a need for more infection disease physician. We are able to send the sample or the isolate directly for next generation sequencing. The first step of any LDT lab-developed test validation is to have a biorepository that has known species and strains. Over the past 10 years, we've been able to collect samples and species in order to expand our database and our sequencing quality. So the thing that excites me the most right now with, with where we are in, in this entire field is as a bioinformatician, the number of studies being done on microbiome sites across the body, especially on healthy individuals, is giving us better and better models of what, what normal or what healthy should look like, which that's not so much as important to us as knowing what now abnormal kind of looks like, what doesn't seem to be normal for, throughout the population. This is helping us build considerably more complex models that show us how to detect abnormal even in things we were never really realizing was abnormal before. And it's even showing us a number of bacteria and fungal species that we had never realized were pathogenic before until we noticed that they're in these abnormal samples. What makes Microgen unique is our turnaround time of three to four days, our cost point, and our supporting clinical research data. 
to support the clinical utility of next-gen sequencing. I think the most impactful research that we have done has been our research with uh, prosthetic joint infections, or PGIs. Um, we have understood that although the infection rate in PGIs is not as great as maybe a urologic infection or UTIs, um, the infection itself is devastating with the potential loss of limb or death to the patient. Uh, and so we have been able to work with top researchers and top clinicians from multiple institutions around the country to design and, and implement a, a rigorous clinical trial to show the utility of next-gen sequencing over standard culture in diagnosing PGI. I can't think of but a very small percentage of my specimens now for which the NGS is not preferable. Almost always I get information that I am not gonna get from any of the other studies. If you treat infections, you need to have a working knowledge of NGS, and indeed you have to have a comfortable knowledge of NGS.